Hey, good morning. First, good let's talk about, I haven't seen Spider-Man, but it blew away the competition, right? It did gangbusters last week. It did, over $110 million, uh, and it is set to probably hit second place this weekend, but if War for the Planet of the Apes doesn't do as well as expected, we could see a battle between the two. I don't think that's going to be the, pay- the case, though. War for the Planet of the Apes is the best-reviewed movie of the three of this recent reboot trilogy. You had Rise of the Planet of the Apes in 2011. That made $55 million in its opening. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes in 2014, that made $72 million. This is probably going to make over 60 and maybe challenge Dawn at that $70 million level. All right, explain to me, where are we with War for Planet of the Apes? I'm confused. <laughs> so this is the final chapter of, the, of this trilogy. Or so we're told. War for the Planet of the Apes, we find Caesar, who's played in motion capture by Andy Serkis. He's wrestling with his darker instincts as he battles the ruthless colonel portrayed by Woody Harrelson. The two of them going toe-to-toe, which looks to make, I mean, to be great. I've not seen this one. I didn't get a chance this week, uh, unfortunately. But the two of them going at it looks fantastic. Um, and the the fate of humans and apes is in the balance. Oh my the future goodness! Of the planet is, is in the this, balance. Is this the same thread that um, Mark Wahlberg was in originally? Uh, yeah, I believe so. All right. I'm not I'm sure. I'm not Roddy really up on my, <laughs> I'm not really up on my my apes. Uh, is, uh, has Charlton timeline. Heston has Charlton Heston found the Statue of Liberty yet in this one? <laughs> not yet. That's coming mm-hmm. right. in in the uh, the next one, which it, is going to be. Uh, Charlton Heston's apes. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have to talk about Saturday Night Live because um, some extraordinary um, uh, records being being tied here with the Emmy nominations. Yeah, 22 uh, nominations yesterday, uh, tied for the most with Westworld of the year. Um, pretty big. I think people expected, we all expected Alec Baldwin to get nominated uh, for his portrayal of President Trump and a bunch of others. I don't think anybody expected 22, though. Um, And this comes off just, you know, fantastic ratings. The show is once again highly relevant. And it'll be interesting to see when it comes back in September how that does, if if the fires keep going for that or if it fizzles out. Alec Baldwin has said he will be back as Trump, but maybe in a limited capacity. So they're not going to build the season around him. Again, so it'll be interesting to see. You know, we have, but we also had uh, nominations for Melissa McCarthy for her Sean Spicer, <laughs> um, and three of the ladies got nominations as well. Uh, Kate McKinnon, who played Hillary Clinton, um, and Kellyanne Conway. Right. Leslie Jones also got a nomination, and Vanessa Bayer in her last season also got a nomination. Yeah, interesting. All right, uh, Westworld. I don't know how many people saw that on HBO. Personally, I thought that was a great uh, run for the first season. You know, I got one episode into it, and then I got distracted with other things, and and so it's one of those things I need to get back to. And I think a lot of people will go back to now that it has so many nominations. Um, It's dense, uh, you know, it's at times confusing. Yes. Um, There's an orgy. So, you know, if those are the things that you're into, then, you know. That's think- just a 10-minute scene. Uh, That's not the whole thing. You know, another another big, uh, The Handmaid's Tale, which is excellent. Yes. Fantastic, and that got the first nomination ever for Hulu in the Best Drama category. So now you have Hulu and Netflix um, and HBO and NBC and AMC all in those categories, which is pretty amazing. Um, And you saw Netflix go from 54 nominations, I believe, last year to over 90 this year. Mm. Uh, The the streaming, they're just producing such great things. A lot of great TV is is out there these days. It's just the trend to watch it all. That's the problem. But but hold on a second, though. Traditional NBC, ABC, CBS. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Saturday Night Live with 22 nominations. That's on at 1030 at night on a Saturday. It goes to show you that primetime television, it... Is, it's got to be officially dead by now, right? It's tough. I mean, if you look at the, who got the nominations, HBO was first with over 110, then Netflix, then NBC was third with 60. I mean, they're hanging in there, mm-hmm. um, and then CBS and then ABC. So in the top five, I believe, NBC, CBS, and ABC are there. Right. But when it comes to critical acclaim and buzz, I mean, it's just it's going to, yeah. to, the, other, yeah. to the other way. But if you look in the comedy series, ABC's represented there twice with Blackish and Modern Family. 
Um, and in the drama series, NBC with This Is Us has a little bit of a comeback. We haven't seen a drama series nominated since The Good Wife. That was a network series a couple of years ago. So right. it's kind of a comeback. Yeah, all right, there you go. Hey, uh, while we have you, uh, we were talking earlier in the show about this fall. You mentioned Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson's in The Glass Castle which is now being made into a movie, going to be released uh, this fall. Have you heard anything about it? Have you seen it? you know anything about it? I, you know, I don't know much about that. All Sorry. Right. All right. Well, find out because <laughs> it's going to be a good I'll one. take a look. All right. There you go. Jason Nathanson, ABC News entertainment correspondent, live from Los Angeles. Jason, have a good weekend. Take care. 826.